the American Health Journal, bringing you the latest information on medicine, psychology, diagnosis, treatment, and prevention. Major medical advances are made each week, and each week the American Health Journal keeps you up to date. Hello and welcome to the American Health Journal. I'm your host, Roger Cooper. On today's program, we have a series of reports that may help you improve your health. First up, an update on bone marrow transplants. Next, an informative report on the benefits of hormone replacement therapy. Suffering with heartburn frequently, you might have GERD, a potentially serious condition. Also, your pituitary gland can develop a tumor which may cause blindness. We'll find out about the treatments for this condition. And finally, treating arthritis, osteoporosis, and musculoskeletal disorders is a specialized field of medicine that we'll learn more about in an upcoming segment. Now on the American Health Journal. You've heard about it, read about it. Just eat cookies and lose weight. No special foods, no weekly meeting, no complicated systems, no points to count. Just eat cookies. Thousands are losing weight every day. So call the Cookie Nation at 877-355-DIET and mention the American Health Journal. Or go to our website to order your cookies. Put in the code AHJ to Diet. get free shipping. Cookie Nation, 877-355. Remember the film, The Boy in the Bubble? As old as that image is, it still exists today as a treatment for autoimmune disease. We went to Children's Hospital Los Angeles and spoke with Dr. Nina Kapoor, a specialist in bone marrow transplant, for an update on the boy in the bubble. So there are a variety of diseases for which a bone marrow transplant is a curative treatment. Um, there are diseases that some of the children who are born with like immune system is missing. And I'm sure you are aware of that boy in the bubble. For that disease, this is a curative disease by doing the bone marrow transplantation. And the diseases like cancer, leukemias, lymphoma, you can treat those diseases with bone marrow transplantation. Matter of fact, nowadays, we don't really call it as a bone marrow transplantation because we use more than just the bone marrow as a source for transplantation. We use bone marrow, we can use peripheral blood stem cell, and we can use cord blood stem cell. So the placental cord blood, which is otherwise thrown away as a waste material, you can utilize that blood from that uh, as a source for stem cell. So it's a stem cell transplantation. Of course, that individual has to be a match with the patient, and it has to be a perfect match. And our best chance of finding such a donor is a sibling. So, but in a family, there's about 35% chance that we're going to find a suitable donor within the family, one sibling matched to another, for about another 65% of the cases, we have to find alternative donor. So it could be uh, unrelated donor who is a match with the patient or unrelated placental cord blood which may be matched with the patient so we can utilize those sources for transplantation. The whole spectrum of ages can be treated with the, the procedure of transplantation. So at present time, yes, the age limit is about 70. That's, we haven't really gone beyond that age to do the transplant. Right now, we have National Marrow Donor Program, which is located in Minnesota. Um, there's a registry, nationwide registry, that I'm one of those that who is enrolled in that program that we have volunteered to get tissue typed. Our typing is in the computer. So when we are looking for a donor who doesn't have a matched sibling donor, we can go into this registry and say, does somebody matches? with my patient. So right now there are about seven million people in, in this registry and they donated and this is, if we call upon them, you are matched with our patient and without knowing who the person is whom they're donating and we keep it anonymous for a year period. Uh, we don't really convey the information who's a patient, who's a donor and they donate the marrow for, for the patient. It's the generosity of the human race that they want to help each other so we are capitalizing on that. There are a lot of promise in the next 10 years. The promise are that we are going a step beyond than just doing the cellular therapy, transplantation cellular therapy. We are now progressing towards genetic therapy, with gene modification, 
if we recognize what is the abnormal gene, just like in those, again, the babies born without immune system, in many of those we know what the abnormal gene is, and then that can be corrected. And recognizing that what are those different type of diseases, how you can modify it. There are a lot of other new development. We have new drugs, we have new growth factors which are all becoming available, which we will be able to utilize in the treatment and supporting these patients who are going through this procedure of transplantation. So it's becoming safer and safer every day, and we are learning more from these patients as well as from these diseases.